Welcome to Planetary Gig Talk, Tales of Music and Your Magic. I'm your host, Jefferson Glassy, Chief Spiritual Dude of the Planetary Gig Society, whose mission is creating unity through music, but as I like to say, making connections through music with the intention of bringing peace. And I am so happy today to be back in Studio One of the worldwide headquarters of the Planetary Gig Society. And our guest today is halfway around the world, a uh, really truly great musician and now friend who I met on a trip, and we'll talk all about that. But uh, I'd like to introduce Raj Saganaka, who is in Rishikesh, India. Raj, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, Jeff, for inviting me in your podcast. I'm so pleased to meet you and talk with you here. Thank you. And thank you. So, everybody, um, you know, one of the things about podcasts I, they tell you is, you know, you shouldn't you date date the podcast so people know when it is, so it's, it's, it's you know, is timeless. But I'm going to tell you exactly when this is, because... We're at a very critical point in really our human history. Um, I was on a trip. I had a business trip to Delhi, India. I left February 18th. Today actually is April 8th. Um, I spent a couple weeks in India, and then I spent a couple weeks in Nepal and got one of the last planes out of Nepal back to the United States. And, of course, have been in quarantine, and we all are under this serious pandemic in India. Um, they went on a lockdown. That's for another week or so, I I think, Raj, and, and uh, it may be extended, but, you know, yep. how are things there in India now? Uh, well, uh, things are uh, all locked down, like many countries in the world. Here also it's locked down till uh, 15, I think 14 night. Uh, but I think the government is uh, going to extend it because in many states it's, it's spreading and it's uh, still, I think, uh, uh, difficult. It will be difficult if uh, they will remove the lockdown. So it might spread more. So I think they are going to extend. Not sure. Let's see. Uh, what happens in the coming days yeah well i you know hope for the best for for you and for everybody um but i also should explain more um i was in rishikesh and uh i was getting these massages these ayurvedic massages <laughs> at a little studio or place um and one of the one day one of the the fellows there said, oh, there, you know, we were talking about music. He said, well, there's a music place right around the corner. And I walked down the alleyway, and there was the Devi Music Ashram. And I tell you, I think it, it changed my life. Um, I didn't know anything about a music ashram. I walked in, took off my shoes there, walked around, met a few people. They pointed me up to the, the fourth floor. It's a four-story building. And and there you were, and we talked a little bit, and I, I came around later, and I went to a sound meditation class, and I went to another performance you had, and you were kind to show me the uh, sitar and tabla and some of those things, and then we got to play a song together, so it was really, really fabulous. I am totally into this idea of music ashrams. Um, I had gone to Rishikesh in part because Maharishi Mahesh Yogi's ashram is it Rishikesh, where the Beatles went in 1968. And it was just amazing meeting you and, and finding out about the ashram. So if you don't mind telling us a little bit about uh, the ashram and sort of where it stands now, and then we can talk about some other other things about, about music. But the Devi Music Ashram, how did this come about? You said it's kind of a new concept. Uh, please explain and tell us what's going on and what you do there. Uh, sure. Thank you so much for the kind words. And uh, the actually, if uh, I must explain some background, that uh, my father is a philosopher. 
so and he is not a musician but he is a music lover so from childhood uh, all our children uh, means me and my siblings were into music so he just uh, made a space you know like he never said that you have to become a musician or you have to become a successful musician or means his philosophy was that whatever the child is doing you just make some space for that child to grow so that way like we all me my sisters uh, we all became musicians so from a uh, long time uh, we were coming to rishikesh you know uh, as a traveler also and there is something in the air here you know in the in the environment that is so like uh, amazing so uh, before it was our uh, uh, desire to stay here and do some music so in this process uh, we just uh, got little land so we started making some space where we can do music and slowly slowly this idea of creating a music ashram developed where uh, we can share music and anybody can come from around the world they can stay here they can learn from us uh, the music we know to and they can also share their music and uh, create uh, a atmosphere of because in india music is not just uh, a entertainment it is uh, not just for uh, it is also a path of uh, spirituality and uh, peace and harmony in life so we do here all kind of uh, music related uh, things sound healings chanting and things like that and many classes are going on for different instruments and things Uh, and singing and we meet great people here like we met you and uh, i must thank you for all your help and all the support you are giving to the ashram thank you certainly for that i'm, I'm so pleased to do that and to know you um so so when did your um when did you 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 said when you were a child you you and your sister started playing music it it i guess it was indian classical music i mean did you start yeah. taking the sitar when you were young and your sisters were singing and um how how did that that go um uh, in uh, in india we have like for music we have teachers like in uh, in india we have guru shishya parampara where you learn from some teacher and it becomes like a uh, family kind of relationship mm-hmm. you go to the teacher you live with the teacher uh, you you get food with them also sometimes you cook with them so it's a very intimate relationship uh, for music in india so when uh, we were young so we uh, we showed interest in music like we uh, so my father introduced us to some local teachers uh, who were teaching indian music indian classical music so in the early years when i was 10 around 10 11 i started learning music and i was learning in the beginning uh, tabla uh-huh. tabla is the indian drums so first in the beginning i learned uh, many uh, different patterns of indian uh, musical uh, system the rhythm cycles i learned to play on the tabla 
and later means uh, much later for very long time i learned tabla but much later i started to because later i uh, felt more uh, connection with sitar so i started playing sitar and then i learned from different uh, teachers and i am still learning i keep on learning uh, music so this is how it has started that's so great and you know i i love the sitar i'm just become enamored with um indian music i've got ravi shankar on my playlist now and and all that today is the uh, uh 100 birthday of ravi shankar also oh wow <laughs> amazing <laughs> amazing music is amazing um so what is what is it about indian music that you think is so unique or that captures one um it it seems more complex than western music in its rhythmic patterns and 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 notes and and the ragas etc uh, i don't have a very deep background in it but it there is something of, about it and how would you just maybe just describe indian classical music uh, well uh, the indian classical music is um, in india we uh, music is there is a a metaphysical uh, also system uh, of music called nad yoga hmm. so in that uh, system it's the ancient uh, metaphysical um, um concept so in which uh, it is believed that every thing is uh, a vibration you know and there is a cosmic vibration also which is called uh, anhat nad means uh, unending sound ah. the eternal sound unending so sound. it is a uh, yeah so that is the sound of the cosmos so and there is uh, ahat nad which uh, like the sound which we create so there is uh, two kind of sound there is a cosmic sound and the sounds that uh, we can create and uh, so so from old time indian music have uh, been uh, the classical music was uh, something of uh, saints if you will see old mu- uh, very ancient time it was uh, um, all the great musicians were saints like spiritual seekers mm-hmm. so indian music developed in that way where you try to connect to the uh, ultimate uh, source or the ultimate reality through music uh. so so from long time in a ra- indian raga system we have uh, different uh, moods of uh, the ragas that like uh, they discovered the different uh, moods of uh, notes and tones mm-hmm. so ragas are usually based on some certain kind of uh, feelings in certain kind of notes so there are ragas for morning uh, day time and evening night raga so it is divided like that and great uh, um, like saints uh, musician saints uh, developed this with their inner uh, i think insight or something uh, i guess so you there are many many ragas of different moods and when you listen to them you can feel that mood that uh, that uh, uh, feeling mm-hmm. so i think that is very special about uh, indian music because it is uh, connected with uh, spirituality very much 
uh, for the connection with the God. And uh, so it is like that, I think. <laughs> uh, sorry, that's my my bird clock. It, it, it shows up on the podcast okay. <laughs> every once in a while if it happens to be on the hour. Um, well, that's okay. just so, um, you know, the fact that the Indian music is very deliberately tied in with and originated with spirituality maybe that's what kind of makes it so so deep in a sense Um, yeah yes and also the structure of uh, classical well in India we have like I think a lot of kind of music you know in India we have like a folk music also which is connected with the local regional uh, culture and ceremonies of uh, different states in India and uh, also the classical music. And the classical music is very different from Western classical music, I think, uh, which we call the Indian classical music because it's very spiritual. And the other aspect also is like when you, uh, the uh, structure of the music is uh, also like there's a lot of improvisation, improvisational aspect of it within some uh, uh, structure, Mm -hmm. within some melodic uh, moods. Like you can do improvisation, but within some... uh, um, uh, so it is like uh, the connection is like also the structure is very uh, lucid, very uh, like uh, not fixed, not rigid, but within some uh, certain uh, uh, structure. Yeah, um, I, I was exposed on my trip to India, uh, I was exposed to uh, various kinds of music. Um, I did see some folk music uh, group played for us one night. That was amazing. Also watched uh, some classical Indian dance. And I know there's different types, and the and the, yeah. they were explaining to us that it's so complex that it's if you want to learn this dance form, you should there's there's about eight different classical Indian dance forms, but you should focus on one per lifetime. Because it's so complex. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's very. Yes. Very funny and wonderful. Yeah. It's yeah. It's uh, like uh, each state in India have uh, their own uh, culture, their own music, their own language. So in folk music, also India is very rich. Each state you will go, you will find a different kind of uh, folk music. And related with local ceremonies, uh, local events, local life, and local food also. So music with uh, folk music and uh, also in uh, dances, each state have their own dance like Kathak, Bharatanatyam. I think seven, eight major uh, Indian dances and many folk dances also. And each are very, very deep and very vast. So, it's uh, I think it's correct that uh, any one dance to master it, you must spend one life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. So the the ashram when I visited there, um, you had uh, uh, performances a couple times a week, sound meditations, um, also classes, and you teach. Let's see, sitar and tabla and and singing and flute and dance. Is that about right? Yes. So, like uh, every Tuesday and Saturday, two day, uh, twice a week, uh, we do musical performance, musical concert, uh, and uh, every Thursday we do a sound meditation. We are doing. And uh, every alternate day we have started uh, because my father is here. So he's also giving philosophy talks here. So people can also learn Indian philosophy. And uh, 
also we are we are all all often we are inviting uh, musicians from all over the india from delhi calcutta and mumbai the artist and we also organize some special concerts for them here nice so there is almost every day there is some activity in the evening we are doing Uh, related to music and dance dance classes also the we have classes for indian kathak dance is also one of the major dance of india so people can learn kathak dance here as well the thing that makes it an ashram is um a spiritual ashram people get together and you know follow a religious leader or hindu or whatever um but a music ashram the idea is that people can live there and the teachers can live there and it is a a sort of a community in time focused on exactly music yes exactly here uh, we uh, there is no the special aspect of this ashram i think like any if you go to any indian ashram you have a guru there like a master whom you follow but we decided that here we will have no master music and uh, this nature is your master here music and so nature so there is no yes mm. and knowledge is your master ah so so no im- Uh, impose we don't impose any idea or any thing you are free to discover your own uh, divinity through music wow we don't we so any idea any kind of philosophy is welcome here so we don't impose like it's a no conditioning here like you you should be like this or you should be like that you should wear this you follow this or you follow that we just give in front of you things and you can choose what you want to do what you want to follow so there is lot of freedom here this is one main aspect here we have kept it's a it's a beautiful concept it's a new concept i've said it before there ought to be millions of them and it was so remarkable for me you know really i didn't even have an intention in a way of going to india or nepal and i ended up there it was just kind of remarkable a block away from where i was going every day and but i did go to rishikesh um p- partly because of the connection that Marishi um had his ashram there I had never been a friend of mine had been and he gave me some good advice um and I I went yes. there and I was really blown away I was amazed at how large it was how much of a community it was it had a post office it had a printing press you know cafeteria places for people to stay beautiful sort of stone hats if you will I'm not sure what you call them and would just a uh, it was such an amazing feeling of course it's 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 there's no nobody there now it's just sort of a state park I guess but the fact that the Beatles the maybe the greatest western band there ever was ended up coming to Rishikesh and staying with Maharishi and playing music there and kind of you know the the east and the west musical traditions touching a bit it just felt really special and i felt so pleased to be able to to see that ashram and and uh, i'm i'm just totally sold on the on the idea whatever we could do to support your ashram and and more music ashrams um i'm going to try to do whatever we can do you have thoughts about that the uh you know the marishi and, and the those type of ashrams and the, and the beatles and and rishikesh you said it's a very sort of special place if you could talk a little bit more about rishikesh and the, the ashram to whatever you'd like to say yeah well uh, 
the maharishi ashram is maharishi was a very um, great uh, saint from india so his ashram i think is just near the ganga it's very nice and uh, in the in the mountain in the lap of the himalayas very great uh, location that is and the great thing about rishikesh i think that many uh, people have expressed that uh, this uh, in this reason uh, there are many great uh, spiritual seekers uh, have uh, spent uh, their life here uh, doing meditation and uh, spiritual practices so they all these uh, the ganga near the ganga so people think uh, and uh, said things like this i don't know how true that this all the ganga have absorbed their uh, energy mm. of these saints from thousands of years so there is lot of um, when you go near the ganga you feel in the lap of uh, the divinity so it's very inspiring place i think beatles also came here and they composed uh, uh, many many songs also here so something very special about this uh, this place here i think yes it it, and, uh, it certainly is um i i i felt it um just you know indian culture i mean it's there's so many people and so much traffic and cows and dirt and rocks and all that but the complexity and the beauty of the spirituality and the music and the colors and the food and the who it just was it was it was so amazing mm-hmm. i'm so fortunate to have run into you um i hoping that you know at some point maybe we can bring some folks uh some western musicians over there and spend a little time with you um certainly would like to support what you're doing um i don't know if you have anything else you'd like to say about uh the music ashram to tell anybody i uh, i know you you do have a i think there's a facebook page but um if anybody wanted to contribute or anything it could certainly be in touch with me and i could make sure that that worked out but um other other thoughts that you have you know maybe i have an ask a question that you'd like to say something about or um yes uh, well anybody and everybody is welcome here whoever is interested in music or even if you are musician non musician if you just want to uh, if you love music you are welcome and here we are doing many activities many uh, music uh, so you can connect with the music and uh, and uh, i think uh, if you will come you will really enjoy here the environment so you are most welcome anybody who wants to come here that i would like to say okay well thanks very much so we will uh we will definitely uh, stay in touch i hope that you know anybody who's is listening if you'd like to learn more just let us know you can google devi music ashram and um or or, or get in touch with me and i'll do what i can to put you in touch with raj and uh just want to say thank you so much for taking the time for doing what you're doing it's very inspiring um and you know we'll uh, we'll just keep the communication going and let let music guide us to where we we need to go thank you very much it was pleasure talking to you and i hope to meet you again here in devi music ashram uh me too i'm i'm all for that all right thanks every that's uh, raj sankanaka and thank you very much thank you You've been listening to Planetary Gig Talk, Tales of Music and Magic. I'm your host, Jefferson Glassy, Chief Spiritual Dude of the Planetary Gig Society. 
We talk with musicians and others about the power of music and how we can use music to help create a better world. Please check out our website, www.planetarygigs.org, for information about some of the organizations promoting music and musicians. Resources about the power of music, books, movies, articles, including new research on music and the brain. We welcome your support. The Planetary Gig Society is a Section 501c3 charitable organization, and you can donate on the website. You also can receive a free email signature block demonstrating your support for Planetary Gig Society. Please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Planetary Gigs. And we want to thank fabulous musician and teacher Eric Weinberg of Little Eric Studios for the Planetary Gig Talk music titled Chill Kid, It's Saul. So please check out Planetary Gig Talk on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Subscribe and hear all the upcoming episodes. Thanks very much.